Good day, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk about my own IoT uh, uh, project that I have been developing since 2014. And in parallel of that, I've been also developing a kind of a spyware software for control of my kids. The idea is quite simple. Uh, it, all, it all began with the question. And the question is the big important question, are we locked? And of course, that question comes at midnight in bed with a slight elbow kick in my ribs by my wife and with a slight note of panic in her voice. Are we locked? And of course, you can guess who gets up, who goes to the door to find out that we are of course locked. And I've been thinking about that problem, curing my pain in my ribs for quite a long time until uh, all the circumstances came and uh, the emerge of uh, cheap and good quality uh, IoT uh, hardware like uh, Raspberry Pi and stuff like that uh, made me uh, uh, available all, all the stuff need, uh, that is needed to, 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 to work with my IoT. Well, um, I finally figured out how to, to implement that system. I, f I finally managed to, to, to grab uh, so-called inductive switch, which is a contactless switch uh, that can be used to, to, de to detect if the door is locked. I drilled a big hole in my uh, door and put that switch and then connected that switch to my Raspberry Pi. And from that on, it was all pure software. The harder part was easy. And from that moment, the first thing was to, to make a small LED that would uh, be uh, lit when the door is locked. OK, but that still requires me to get up uh, from the bed and to go to see uh, if, if the door is locked. So the next obvious step is to, of course, implement some kind of a computer notification that would end up on my mobile phone. So instead of, you know, kicking me, my dear wife can now watch a look at the phone and see that we are locked. If she is a bit paranoid, she can always tap on the icon and pull the system to find out, are we really locked? So that's the idea. And of course, as a quite unexpected benefit. Now I know exact moment when I, my kids come home and that in combination with my Evil Dead software uh, makes uh, all this presentation even more fun. So uh, the idea is quite uh, easy to, to be implemented. Uh, you have a, a kind of a smart door. You put the so-called inductive switch in the door and then you connect that switch to the Raspberry Pi. And Raspberry Pi is a uh, quite nice piece of hardware because it has about 40 GPIO pins uh, uh, on, on a connector, so you can connect all sorts of digital stuff to it, including the sensor for the door. So uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, notifies then my various servers, uh, and those servers uh, push the notification messages through the Android ecosystem uh, right to my uh, mobile phone and I get immediate notification that my door has been locked or unlocked with the timestamp when that event happened. And of course, if I visit my website, I can uh, watch in, a, in a real time uh, if the door is locked and unlocked. And if I'm, as I said, a little bit more paranoid, I can even pull and ask the system, okay, now give me the exact status, status of that door. I'm not interested in, in the history. So, uh, that worked perfectly. My ribs are not hurt anymore. And, but then the, the, the hacker and programmer in me kicked in and I said, hmm, I, I have purchased some um, Raspberry Pi starter kit and I have found inside a temperature sensor. Why not adding that to the system? So I wired up a temperature sensor, put it in my, uh, on, on, on that same Raspberry Pi. And of course, when it worked, I figured out why not introducing several more Pis and several more sensors. So I did that. I bought more Pis, more sensors. And at that moment, I had a temperature network sensor. Network sensor. And uh, I had a sensor on my uh, outside of my apartment uh, on a terrace, so I can figure out what's the temperature outside. I have I have several sensors in my um, in my uh, apartment, and then one of the sensors had the humidity. Why not adding that? So I have information about humidity. I mean, it is quite obvious, you know, uh, when it is not that hot and you are sweating, it is humid. But never, nevertheless, I, I have implemented that too, and then of course. 
<clears throat> I looked at the web to see hmm, uh, what are the most popular sensors that could be added to the Raspberry Pi. And I found out that uh, th those are motion detection sensors. So put them, I put them also in the system. But it is a different story, you know. Uh, the temperature, you actually ask the, the Raspberry Pi, what's the temperature at your place? And this is the, right the opposite action. Uh, the Raspberry Pi gets notified by the motion detection sensor that someone is moving in front of it. So the Raspberry Pi needs to push that information upwards to the server and then down to my mobile phone or to, to the web application. So I had to make a, a little bit more of programming to make some, something more uh, specific to this problem. And I, of course, solved that. You will see in a in few slides. OK, uh, now the motion detection works uh, just like this. Uh, if if the, the sensor is being activated by someone moving in front of it, it will push that information with the exact timestamp when it was uh, activated right uh, through the web application. So I can see on the motion detection sensor uh, that uh, the time stamp, exact time stamp when that sens sensor was activated. And if I tap or click on that particular sensor, I can see the list of uh, timestamps when that sensor was activated in time. So when my uh, older son uh, comes home and he starts, starts to, to, you know, lying to me that he, will, he came on time, I said, come on, I have a sensor in my door, I have a sensor in my house. I, I cover everything. And then, OK, not about coming home late. Then uh, he tries to convince me that uh, he really went to sleep on time. And then I uh, saw the sensor being activated at 3 a.m. He went to the bathroom. I said, no, no, no that's not the case. So uh, I became a real evil dad. And that's the, 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 the story today. OK, what about actuators? We are talking about sensors. I, can, I have only one actuator, and it is not a real actuator. It is actually an a infrared um, diode that emits infrared light. And that uh, thing is connected to one of my Raspberry Pis, and it uh, simply fakes or emit, mimics or emulates uh, the remote control for my AC. So uh, when we uh, come from the vacation, we enter Serbia, we have, let's say, at least six hours of traveling across the Serbia to come to Novi Sad. Then I go to the website, my home website, and I turn on the AC. And by the time we come to, to home, our apartment is more or less chilled to the appropriate temperature. And uh, this is a uh, rough schematics of my home system. It uh, actually uh, is, uh, cons consists of several Raspberry Pis, and each one of them is connected to several sensors, all types of sensors, all, or the humidity, or the temperature, or the motion detection, or the uh, inductive switch, all sorts of sensors. And they all provide information to the home server. Uh, that home server uh, pushes that information to the main server, which is on a dedicated machine somewhere on the internet. And then it uses Google to push the uh, messages, notification messages to my Android application. Or uh, it, it, that server, the main server, pushes the messages through web sockets to the website. So I get uh, real-time information about motion detection sensors. And uh, that main server is actually uh, on a, uh, put on a commercial virtual machine uh, with impressive price of $3.5 per month. And uh, I, before I, I decided to put that on a commercial server, I tried all sorts of free servers. And as it says, free servers, it's never free. You always have to pay some kind of penalty. And I finally decided uh, to, to, to spend that enormous amount of money of three and a half dollars per month and to buy uh, a real virtual server. And I have placed uh, a Java application, which is a web server, and it uh, collects all the information, pushes those informa that information to the uh, Google Cloud, pushes that information to uh, my, uh, my website. So uh, when I, whenever I visit my website, I, I get real-time information about status of my home. Uh, that home server is also a Java application. It uh, pulls all the sensors. It, wait, it waits uh, for the motion detection sensor to, to, to send the information. And then all that information is pushed upwards to the main server. And uh, interesting enough, home server is not actually a, a, a Raspberry Pi. It is a Korean clone of Raspberry Pi called Odroid. And it is an unbelievable machine. And I'm uh, shamelessly advertising them here. OK. And, uh, 
what about the sensors? All the sensors are connected to their appropriate uh, corresponding uh, Raspberry Pis. Um, some of them are Raspberry Pi 1 because it was actual at that time when I purchased. And after that, I, I started uh, purchasing uh, Raspberry Pi 0 because it is smaller, uh, it is cheaper, and it works the same. So uh, most of my sensors, uh, my uh, Pis uh, today are zeros, Raspberry Pi zeros, and uh, of course that Odroid and Raspberry Pi 1 and so on and so on. Well, um, on one of them I have connected that infrared uh, diode that emits infrared light to, the, to my AC. Obviously that one is conveniently placed under my AC, my, my climate control, so whenever I uh, click on a button on my website, it turns on or it turns off uh, the, the AC. And now, funny stuff, uh, I have found some old crappy earphones and I just connected them to the Pi. And they emit a, a sine wave, 3000 Hertz, when uh, a sound, uh, when our door is being unlocked uh, for more than one minute. And that's the key point. Then I figured out when we are actually unlocked. And what is the story? It's never at night because we would hear that. But what is the situation when most of us actually forget to, to close the door, to, to, to lock the door? Well, you come with two kids, they're always nervous. Then you come, you have plenty of, of bags with you. Then you dump everything inside the apartment. You start, you, you know, unpacking, you start uh, taking off shoes and everything. Then this one wants to go to the bathroom, this one wants to do something. And all that fuss, you simply forget to, to lock the door. And then this stuff kicks in and it starts beeping. And then it is very annoying. If you ever heard 3000 Hertz sine wave, it is very annoying. And of course, <clears throat> that reminds me that my door is not locked and then I lock the door. So th that was the idea. Uh, uh, that was the actual moment that when I figured out that we are indeed unlocked sometimes during the day, but it is never in the morning. It is always in those stupid situations when you have to do multiple things when you come home. And then you forget to, to, to lock the door. And a final let's say final appearance, but it is not final. Uh, this one is near the door, and uh, inside there is a hidden pie in that box. My wife, my beloved wife donated me her, uh, some, her box, and I put the pie and all the stuff inside. And this is the famous uh, AC uh, controller. So this is the LED. It uh, emits the infrared light upwards to the, uh, to the AC, and it turns on or off the uh, the AC. This is the Android application, and this is this exactly is the icon of my Android application. If you can see, it, it is a, a red lock, which means the door the door is locked, and it was locked at 10:32. And I had some room, and I pu placed the information about temperature inside the apartment and outside the apartment. And uh, when the door is unlocked momentarily it changes the, the, the color to the green. I get the, the timestamp when the door is unlocked and if I'm a bit paranoid I can tap with my finger on this icon and I get the immediate st status of my, of my door. So I can always pull that thing. This is the web application. It has several uh, menu items. And the first, this is the, the, the history of my door being locked or unlocked. And if it, this is red, this means that there has been detected some motion inside the apartment after the door was locked. Of course, when someone is inside the apartment, that is not the problem, that is normal, but if you go on a vacation and you see that, uh, that could cause some kind of a, a problem. But actually we found out that there is a false positive uh, motion detection triggering on those sensors because they uh, actually react on infrared uh, light being emitted from, from our body heat. And if the sunbeam somehow uh, conveniently hits the, the motion detection sensor, it triggers like someone was in front. And I found out, and uh, of course it is uh, quite uh, interesting because on this particular uh, uh, picture, you, this is my apartment, and for example, if this is activated and nothing else is activated, and this one is actually uh, uh, right next to the to the door, then you can guess that it, it came from the sunbeam coming from the from the window. And this is the fun stuff. Uh, if someone passes near the infrared sensor, then this becomes orange, like this one, 
and you, you see that this is orange and someone activated this sensor. This one is here, this is the bathroom. That's the place when I caught my son, you know, uh, cheating and lying that he, 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 he laid on time. No, he didn't. And uh, uh, this one is uh, perpendicular to that, this one is here, and this one is uh, next to the computer. So there is a funny situation. I get a notification that my kid came home, then I see all the sensors like this, and then this, you know, uh, becomes a, a, a brighter orange, 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 meaning that he immediately sat in the computer and started playing the games. So I can, I can easily figure out uh, what is happening uh, with them. And if I tap or click on any of those sensors, I get the information history in time, um, uh, all the times that sensor was activated in fast past 24 hours. And uh, this one is also interesting. Since I have all that, those sensors, it, it, it's, pr it's, it's shame not to use that, that data. So I'm plotting the temperature change, humidity change. This is inside the apartment, two sensors of temperature. This one is outside and this is the humidity. Uh, now I'm sorry that I didn't put, uh, for example, from yesterday, you would see spikes of uh, rising humidity when the, 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 the rain started to fall. And it really uh, uh, follows that, that pattern. So when the rain starts to fall, you get uh, immediate uh, rise of humidity. And if nothing happens, it will stay that time. Uh, during the, the summer, if the AC kicks in, then the, the humidity drops suddenly back to normal because the AC always drives the air. So uh, you get a very interesting picture and I finally, finally had the link between numerical data and feeling. For example, if I look outside and I see that it is 4 uh, degrees Celsius, I know what to wear. Okay, someone would say you can go to the terrace and do it yourself, just, you know, the, the, to sense the, the temperature. But nevertheless, I, I have that numeric data and it really helps me uh, to, to, to distinguish um, what, what, what is happening. But it would uh, require me uh, to go to my mobile phone, to go to, to the Android application or to my website to see the temperature. And sometimes I just want to know what's the temperature to, to know what to dress. And of course, I always have some spare uh, Raspberry Pis. And I have two of them actually. And I have purchased some cheap screens from AliExpress. And I uh, this all these marvelous electronics, as you can see, uh, with a lot of hot glue and stuff like that. And uh, these are actually like a, like a, a wall clocks. I put them on a, on a wall and I see immediately see the temperature. Uh, the time and that's enough for me. So uh, I always have spare Raspberry Pis and they somehow tend to die when, the <laughs> when there is no electricity and then it comes uh, in and then that surge of electricity kicks in and it always makes some kind of a damage. And now we come to the uh, more uh, funny piece of my uh, uh, talk today and this is the so-called Evil Dead application or in Serbian Zlibabo. And this uh, Evil Dead application uh, is actually uh, made because my kids do not have self-control as expected, of course. And a couple of times uh, my older son uh, almost got late or really got late to school because he played some game. He could not, you know, leave the game and, and eat his lunch or just go to the, to, to the school. And of course I installed, momentarily I installed some software some other software for control, and most of those softwares uh, are not controllable by, you know, by mobile phone, by some application, website, or something like that. You need to go to that particular computer and do something, and uh, I'm too lazy for that. And, uh, of course, as I said, when they're left alone, they're glued to desktop computers and mobiles. So, I try to restrict my older kid's time on a mobile by filtering his MAC address from the home router. And what he did, he found out some neighbor's router that was not uh, password protected and he connected to that uh, and started, you know, again coming at home watching YouTube. Then I had the neighbor's router to filter out my kid and what he, what did he do? He found out another one. And I said this is a lost cause. I cannot simply check that many router neighbors routers because of him and I decided to cut the thing at the, at the very beginning inside his mobile phone. And I have made an uh, Android application, uh, which is uh, uh, with contact, contacts it, it, uh, the server, and whenever my kid is online, it ticks each minute and uh, until uh, the, the tick count reaches the daily quota, and then it 
uh, lost the telephone. So he can, he, the only thing he could do is to call the police, 112 or 911 in America, and say, hello, police, my dad lost my phone. I cannot play games. So uh, that, that's the, the idea, that's the feature. It is, not, it is not my programming skills, that's the feature when you load the Android phone, you can only call the police, nothing else. So I did that, and on a desktop, desktop computer, I did the same. I made a service in, in a C-sharp, and that service uh, does the same thing. It uh, ticks, and after the quota has been reached, it uh, uh, not logs, it logs out, not lock uh, the screen, it logs out my kid, so if he's playing game, the game is terminated. So he cannot continue with playing the game. And both things are controlled from the single place, my evil dead server. So this is the web application, and I can play with that application, you know, from wherever. Uh, even if I'm abroad, uh, I, I get the message, Dad, could you please extend me five minutes more? I need to finish this game. No problem. I just click and I, 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 I give them an additional minutes. Or if they make me mad, I have a kill switch. One button that momentarily kills everything. And if it is really a rush, I have less than a minute, please. Eh? Then I have a also instant, instant uh, uh, key that instantly uh, gives them some additional time. So I have, you know, quick, quick dial buttons to do quick stuff. And of course, I can always play, you know, select, uh, <laughs> modify, modify, save stuff, you know, the CRUD operations and informational systems. And this application uh, is actually uh, my response to those challenges with mobile phones and, and, and uh, PC computers. And uh, this is how it looks. It is a masterpiece of web design, of course, as you can all see. And uh, this is the table which uh, lists all the accounts that I have created. So this is the desktop computer. And uh, this is the desktop, desktop computer for my uh, older and for my younger son. This is the daily quota, two hours and one and a half hours. This is the last ping from the computer, so I know what's the last time when they pinged it, when they, when they worked with that. This is the mobile phone of my younger kid, and this is the mobile phone of my, my old, older uh, son. And please pay attention to the date. This is the actual date. Do you see something strange? This is here. On that slide, this is the year 2018, which means that my software is no longer controlling my older son. Why? He would be socially inadequate if he is not 24 hours logging into my facility on the internet. So I simply get to uninstall even that because my son would be a social outcast. And that, that the, the fate of my younger kid, he will definitely come to that age and then the evil that will be uninstalled from his mobile phone too. When they are small, you can do it without any problems, without any uh, sense of guilt, you can do it. But when they become older and they start making social networking and contacts, no evil dead, unfortunately. However, evil dead on, on a, a desktop is always more than adequate for that. So, what's the, uh, what's the story uh, recap of this? Uh, I get the notification when the door is unlocked. Then, both of them connect to the home Wi-Fi or run to the computer. And then, of course, the evil dead waits for them on that particular moment. And then, I know everything. I can control them. We will see in the future how that will work. We all know that I at this moment, Evil Dead is uninstalled from my older son mobile phone, and of course that is the fate for, the, for my younger son. So, um, th that, that is the recap of, of all the stories. I have some boring stuff, but I am not sure that we have enough time, so I will, I will simply uh, skip the, those things. Uh, what I wanted to talk uh, about that is that uh, Raspberry Pis are uh, very prone to, to self-destruction. And of course, if the, the everything, uh, if the electrical power goes out, then the SD card is corrupted, and then you have all sorts of problems. So I have made uh, three interesting stuff. I have made a primitive UPS made of uh, ultra cap capacitors. I have transformed the file system to the read-only, and I have developed a hardware watchdog timer that uh, checks my uh, system and uh, does the automatic reset. Reset is everything is done. So. To end this with a conclusion, it all started as a hobby project almost five years ago, and it works 
for quite a long time quite stable and in conjunction with evil that application gives me some control over my kids of course they don't like it and you would uh, wonder why my wife doesn't like it not because of the features she likes the features and she feels quite safe with all those features but she hates when i'm in development mode when i'm in development mode i'm not friendly at all i just bark on everyone and say i say leave me alone i want to code and I code for 10 hours if necessary. So she hates those moments and that's why she doesn't like it. But fortunately, the software is quite stable and I, now I do just periodical, you know, maintenance and everything so it is not the problem anymore. So, the future work. Why not adding webcams but this is tricky. You know, motion sensor, triggered image capture, I don't like those uh, cameras being uh, available to, to, for people to watch me coming to bathroom, probably only my tights and sh shorts and stuff, stuff like that so perhaps this one is better hardening or replacing RPs or Raspberry Pis with ESP32 or Arduino because uh, they are more resilient and uh, but there also needs to be programmed in C and I was too lazy I done all this programming in Python Python because it is quite easy and I need to uh, dust off my C skills when I start playing with ESP32. So, the main conclusion is it was fun and it is useful. And thank you for your attention.